I mean, they do work very hard, and that's their main aim, is to be working. They don't want to be sitting around in the caravan. Uh, you know, they, they just don't want to be sitting around doing nothing. So, seven days a week, they're working. He, um, he came knowing absolutely no English at all, and I mean no English, he knew no English, so we sort of took him under our wing a bit, and he worked quite closely with me for the first period. Um, and yeah, I don't, know, I don't know why, we just hit it off really. I came to the UK for the better job opportunities. The money here is much more than I could have earned in Poland, and so I can provide a better future for me and my family back home. He came initially to paint the house. We needed the house painting, I needed a painter. Uh, and so he came for a whole year and he worked for me painting the house and doing bits and bobs around the house and did a bit of work on the farm. Um, and then I found him another job with the builder who he went off and worked with for about a year and a half and then he went on to do the boat building. But he's always lived here on the farm uh, and he works for me every weekend to pay his rent. So that's how, I, that's how he works for me. My wife Anna had cancer, so the money I earn goes towards her treatment. Any money left over goes towards the house I'm building for me and my family. Um, well, as he's explained it to me, is um, he's very much come across here with one single objective, and that is to build a house back home uh, and to earn enough money, obviously, to do that. Uh, so that's that's his whole objective. And what he does after that, I don't know. A few Polish guys that we've got, including Hubert, um, put in a, a lot of effort and are much are far more dedicated than some of the younger guys that we've taken on over the last few years. Having now um, got involved, and we've got four Polish guys here, um, and seeing their keenness, um, I think for for manufacturing anyway, for this type of factory work. Um, it's vital if, if, we, if we want to stay in business. I'm looking forward to Stuart coming to Poland with me. I want to show him how in Poland some people have enough to have a future and some people don't. Here in the UK everyone has a chance to make a future for themselves even if they don't show it. Um, I've obviously heard quite a bit about where he lives. Um, I have no preconceptions about what the country's going to be like. Um, I almost think it's going to be like taking a step back in time um, to as this country used to be, or like the West Country used to be. I used to live down in the West Country ten years ago, and that quite similar. Lots of small farms, um, quite a tight communities. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to it. I think it should be quite interesting. Well, we drove to um, Hubert's house uh, and went to see his mother-in-law and his wife and son Michal. Uh, they were really pleased to see him when we got there. I think we were a bit surprised at what cramped living conditions they were all living in. Uh, they were all, the whole family were living in four rooms, uh, two gen different generations, uh, and Hubert and his wife and Michal were living in two rooms and then his mother-in-law and two grown-up children were living in the other two rooms. Um, I suppose it opened our eyes as to why he's come across to England to um, build a house, um, why he's come across to England to save enough money to build a house in Poland. Obviously, Michal and I miss him when he is away. But the money is so much better in England that we just have to put up with him being away for so long. I think it was the next morning we went for a walk down the road and looked at the neighbours' houses. There was the grand housing uh, and then there were some real shacks. So there was the real different ends of the social spectrum there. 
in terms of rich people and not quite so rich people. It was quite interesting. Um, there was there are lots of small farm holdings there. Um, they've all been shrunk over the years where the different member of each family has inherited a little bit of the land so they might have started off with 50 acres originally and now they're now down to something like four or five acres uh, and of course every generation that comes along wants its little slice of the the pot so as to speak so these small holdings are getting smaller and smaller and obviously becoming totally unviable in terms of an agricultural point of view and um, Hubert's obviously planning on building right slap bang next to his mother-in-law's house um, we saw the bit of land, uh, it's very nice, it's got a nice out outlook, good views across the countryside. Uh, and then on the next day we went to actually visit Hubert's parents who lived about a quarter of an hour away from his mother-in-law's house. That was really interesting. Um, met his father who'd worked uh, on the railway in, in the war time uh, and, and subsequently after that uh, when it was under Russian occupation. He was quite an interesting character, uh, had some strong views on what's happening now and what had happened in the past. He almost harked back to the days when the Russians were involved in the country, I think. Uh, I think things ran a lot smoother and there wasn't so many haves and have-nots. His mother was a real card. She was um, she was quite funny in, in her attitude to things and uh, she, she was laughing and giggling and she's quite keen to come to England. So I think he was a bit shocked that his mother might come to England and uh, embarrass him, I think, somewhat. So, uh, But we did invite her across and we'll wait to see if she'll actually venture across the water. I have a better understanding of, uh, uh, of, of where he's come from, obviously. And uh, I mean, I did pretty much know the reasons for him, but I don't think I really appreciated the, the actual living living situation that he was living in, the living accommodation and um, you know how cramped it was and how tight everything was in the house. After having been there I understand you know the sacrifices that Hubert's having to make to provide for his family and, and to secure a future for himself back in Poland. Um, you know it's quite heart-wrenching to see when he has to leave his family and poor old Michal there is crying away at the gate as he as he drives out and stuff and you know he is really making quite a sacrifice to come across here and work um, you know with, with, with us English um, but on the other hand I can see that it's his only way out really because he's going to have to wait for a long time I think before Poland catches up with the wages that we see here in the UK and probably in the rest of Europe so it is probably his only alternative if he wants to move out of his house and have to secure a better future for his family. Um, but somebody like Hubert, I'm sure, with his skills uh, and his, and his hard working, he will secure himself a future back in Poland as things start to pick up. What, what I'd be really interested in is to go back in five or six years' time uh, and see th how things have progressed, not just with Hubert, but also with the country. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how things develop over there. from you